Nine months, 669 children, 6,000 descendants, one man. As Hitler was gaining power in Europe, many people were threatened by Hitler's plans for a perfect race. Though many people and nations simply ignored what was happening, one man decided to take action. One man that, despite having no connections to the situation whatsoever, was compelled to take the stand that now over 6,000 people owe their lives to. Sir Nicholas Winton took a stand by rescuing 669 Czechoslovakian children and demonstrating how, in spite of the lack of action from the government, one individual can make a difference. In late 1938, Adolf Hitler, Chancellor of Germany, has seized control of a portion of Czechoslovakia bordering Germany, called the Sudetenlands, through the Munich Agreement. The Munich Agreement was a treaty signed by England, France, Germany, and Italy that allowed Hitler to seize the Sudetenlands as long as he would stop his ambitions to conquer Europe. This was agreed by Czechoslovakian officials, and the Sudetenlands became Nazi German land on October 1st, 1938. The Sudetenlands were home to millions of people who were political opponents of the Nazis. To avoid certain persecution, many of these people migrated to Prague, where refugee camps were set up. The camps were terrible and were an inhumane way of living. It was difficult for refugees to escape Czechoslovakia, as the world closed their borders on Nazi-threatened people. The only country that was letting in refugees was England. The BCRC, or British Committee for Refugees from Czechoslovakia, was an organization working to grant adults and their families visas into England. However, there was no organization that solely helped Czechoslovakian children. During Christmas of 1938, Nicholas Winton, a 29-year-old stockbroker working in the London Stock Exchange, was preparing to head to Switzerland on a skiing trip with his friend, Martin Blank. In the middle of packing, Winton received a call from Blank stating he was in Prague helping Czechoslovakian refugees. Inspired by Blank, Winton also went to Prague. One of the first things Winton did in Prague was look at the camps. He was horrified by how the refugees lived. Winton later commented that, The situation was heartbreaking. The parents tried desperately to at least get their children to safety when they couldn't manage visas for the whole family. I began to realize what suffering there is when the armies start to march. What Nikki Winton found was that there were people working to get adults out, but, no, and, but nobody was doing anything about children. And if the parents couldn't go, then the children couldn't go either. So he decided he could at least get the children out. In Germany and Austria, there were operations known as kinder transports that tried to get children from the Nazi-occupied lands to England. However, there was no such thing in Czechoslovakia. Winton, who was shocked by the situation, felt compelled to take a stand and tried to at least rescue the children from the horrors in Prague. He contacted the BCRC and declared his ambitions. Soon after this encounter, Winton was approached by refugee families begging to take their children to England. Families met with him at his hotel and a local cafe, where he began creating a list of refugee children. The list increased day by day and easily reached the thousands. Because there were more children on the list than could be sent to England, Winton also wrote letters to representatives of various countries in hope they would admit refugee children. He even wrote straight to President Franklin Roosevelt, who was leading a refugee-hesitant America. Despite his efforts, he received the same response every time. No. Discouraged, Winton persisted and was even more determined to send as many children to England as possible. However, as Winton still worked as a stockbroker, he had to return to his day job in England. Though it wasn't ideal, he was given the opportunity to more closely interact with the Home Office. The Home Office was the Department of British Government pertaining to immigration and operated slowly while placing many restrictions on child immigration. One of these was that children entering England had to be accompanied by a parent or guardian. 
Winton was able to bend this rule by lying that he was the honorary secretary of the children's section of the BCRC. Though his position wasn't affirmed until May 24th, four Czech kinder transports had already been conducted and he was forging documents that the home office wouldn't be able to deliver in time for the kinder transports. Another large problem was the financial aspects of the kinder transports. A 50 pound bond had to be paid for the admittance of each child into England, equivalent to today's $3,250. This was a hefty price, but was made possible with the support of organizational sponsors, such as the Woodcraft Folk, the Barbican Mission, and the Chief Rabbi's Religious Emergency Council. While in England, Winton's main task was finding foster families for the children. He sent letters to many different newspapers across the country, such as the Picture Post and the Mirror. He showed them portraits of the children to encourage them to print articles about the crisis in Czechoslovakia. This is how he identified foster families, who were reading their respective papers. These families lived across the country from London to Newcastle. Children were also sent to a Czech boarding school in Wales. When a foster family notified Winton, he came to their house with placards of children, consisting of six to eight portraits along with their name, date of birth, and religious affiliation. When a foster family agreed on a child, Winton would mark a child as placed on the placard, and they were allowed admittance into England. Despite the many obstacles encountered, the first Czechoslovakian kinder transport was conducted on March 14, 1939. It left Wilson Station in Prague and traveled through Germany to get to the Netherlands. Afterwards, the children went on a ship to cross the North Sea into London. Then, they took a train to arrive at the final destination of Liverpool Street Station. Meanwhile, Nazi Germany continued to rise. The day after the first Czech kinder transport, Hitler invaded the rest of Czechoslovakia. Through the snow, the legions of occupation march into Czechoslovakia. This rapid stroke, which has outraged all freedom-loving nations of the world, is carried out with military exactitude. Infantry, too, stride confidently through the streets of the city, now reduced to the capital of a protectorate. This created an urgent atmosphere to rescue the children immediately inspiring an even busier summer of 1939. During this time, four kinder transports were conducted, carrying a total of 508 children. The largest of these was conducted on July 1st, carrying 241 children. Unfortunately, the inevitable occurred. On September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland, which sparked the beginning of World War II. All borders in Europe were then closed. That same day, the 9th Kinder Transport was scheduled to leave, carrying a total of 250 children. It was cancelled, and the children were never seen again. It is thought that the guilt from this unsuccessful transport and the many children he couldn't save kept Winton from mentioning any of this to his friends or family. In fact, his stand and heroic deeds went unknown for 50 years. And he was, a, he was a, a humble man who had no interest at all in promoting himself. In all, 669 children were saved by Winton's efforts. Winton wasn't obliged to act in Prague. It consumed an enormous amount of time, effort, and energy. In spite of that, he decided to still take a stand that created an everlasting ripple effect. Though he passed away on July 1, 2015, at the age of 106, there's one huge takeaway from his life. It doesn't take a saint to make an impact. Whether it be saving the lives of 669 children or volunteering at a hunger task force, the same is true. One stand is all it may take to create a difference in the life of another. Can I ask, is there anyone in our audience tonight who owes their life to Nicholas Winton. If so, could you stand up, please?